This is the Lauf Siegler, on which I'm about to tackle, I think perhaps my toughest ever ride, the legendary 220 mile long King Alfred's Way Trail in the south of England, in a day. Now there is a full video up on GCN documenting my attempt. If you've seen it, don't let me know what happens because, um, well, I don't want to know. And also, I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Right here and now though on GCN Tech, I'm going to talk you through this new bike from Icelandic brand Lauf and also the very minimal kit that I'm going to be taking with me. And then perhaps at the end, future me can travel back in time and let us know whether it worked out or not because um, there's a strong possibility that I'll end up shivering under a hedge in the middle of the night with not enough clothing. Anyway, right now, let's talk through the bike. If you're anything like me, you're gonna be sat there looking at it thinking that is one seriously sexy bike. I mean, it is. Now, it's Lauf's top-end ultimate build, although I have swapped out the wheels. More on that later on. And I've chosen white, as you can see. It's one of four colour options, and I'm very pleased with my choice, quite frankly. Now, one of the most distinctive parts of a Lauf bike is that fork up front, the grit suspension fork. It's actually been around for a long time now, but if you've not seen one yet, I'll quickly talk you through it. It uses fiberglass leaf springs here to provide the suspension. And it is very, very different to a standard telescopic fork. For a start, there's no damping here, but then there's also basically no friction. So it's incredibly supple, particularly over high frequency vibrations, like gravel, basically. It's also, as you can see, incredibly light, it's super simple. So this is about 800 grams, which is nearly half a kilo lighter than your typical gravel telescopic suspension fork. And finally, it's maintenance free. I mean, there is literally nothing you can do to this, whereas on a telescopic fork, there's an awful lot of maintenance going on there. Now, as I said, these forks have been around for a while now. These are the third generation, would you believe? So I asked Lauf whether or not any of the really old forks are starting to show signs of fatigue. And they said, no, they're not, quite frankly. And although these leaf springs look elegantly fragile, they're not. And I know that for a fact, because I've tried to break one with a hammer before. <laughs> On to the frame then, the Siegler. Where do we even start? To me, I think it's fair to say that this feels like a gravel bike that's really pushing the genre, not at either end of the spectrum, but by taking what makes a gravel bike a gravel bike and then just refining it and allowing it to do more. So they have focused, I'll say, on increasing the compliance of the bike. Also robustness, which I think is absolutely mega, but not at the expense of weight. So this is still about a thousand grams for a frame. And they've also built in enormous tire clearance. So 57 millimeters wide on a standard 700C wheel, but again, not at the expense of handling. So they've managed to keep the geometry really nice and tight and nimble. The seat stays are 425 millimeters long, which helps the bike feel nice and agile. But then the top tube is quite long, which helps make the wheelbase of the bike a bit longer and also allows you to keep your position on the bike as you would want it, but still use a much, much shorter stem. Again, making the bike feel agile and playful. It's very much in the kind of mountain bike school of geometry, which Lauf point out that they actually feel they were the first to the gravel bike market with when they launched their last bike in 2017. To get that tire clearance, they've done some really cool stuff actually. First, you'll notice that unusually for a gravel bike, this doesn't have dropped chainstays. So where it comes out the back of the bottom bracket and then goes down, nor does it have elevated chainstays. In fact, that both solutions to the problem presented too many compromises. So instead, what they've done is in order to get that tire clearance, they have made the drive side chainstay really narrow and out of solid carbon fiber which is cool, isn't it? So you get that tire clearance and it's also mega robust, they say. So if you ever were to suffer from chain suck, six millimeters of solid carbon fiber isn't going anywhere. 
Then there's also a slightly different type of bottom bracket on here than you'd normally see on a gravel bike. So whereas a normal gravel bike uses a 68 millimeter shell, here you've got a 73 mil shell, which is what you'd normally find on a mountain bike. But you're not using mountain bike cranks here. SRAM are supplying road slash gravel cranks that give you a Q factor that is more familiar to gravel and road riders. And yes, whilst we're here, it is a threaded bottom bracket. Of course it is, Lauf Icelandic. Next, compliance. Now, Lauf say that this bike has more compliance than other market-leading comfortable gravel bikes. They reckon they've achieved that through five key things that all work together. So you'll notice that the rear end of the top tube is really slim. The seat stays are really slim. They're also dropped down the seat tube. And the seat tube itself is lightly curved and so those four things working together acts like a kind of very basic suspension system and then the fifth thing is that you'll notice there's quite a lot of exposed seat posts on the bike and that is because exposed seat posts gives you more compliance more flex basically and lastly i want to tell you about the layup Lauf, interestingly, are saying that they've deliberately avoided using high modulus carbon fiber, which is normally something that bike manufacturers market their bikes on. But they say they don't feel like it's appropriate for gravel. Now, high mod carbon fiber is very light, but Lauf say they got the weight down using other means of engineering. So they've avoided using those light, but brittle and stiff fibers to make the bike more robust. And I really like that. Apparently this is tested to mountain bike ISO safety standards as well. I'm using a size medium, which ships with an 80 millimeter long stem that I've actually swapped for a 90 millimeter long stem because although my roots are very much off-road, I am also still a dyed in the wool roadie and I like to be really stretched out. But I haven't actually decided which one I'm gonna run yet. So I might well swap the 80 mil back in about 10 o'clock tonight in my hotel room. In terms of what other kits is hanging off this luscious frame, we've got Lauf's Smoothie Handlebars, which is similarly tuned for compliance. I've also got a SRAM Red Axis 12-speed wireless group set on here. This is the wide version, so I've got a 1044 cassette on there. I've got a 40-tooth chain ring, and I've actually got a quark power meter on there as well. The wheels that I've dropped in, dropped in are zip 353 nsws which are insanely light mega aero i've also got pirelli cinturato 45 mil wide gravel tires on here 45 mil laugh say is about the sweet spot for this bike now in terms of the kit that i'm taking with me there's not very much of it is there really? I've got my Wahoo Element Bolt, which you'll already have seen on my bike, handling navigation duties and recording things so that you know that I've done it. Then I've got a Topeak Top Tube Bag. In it, I've got a very important battery pack so I can keep the Element Bolt topped up. Charging cable as well. Phone, which will also get charged from the battery pack. I've got a GoPro so I can vlog the shit out of it. Spare batteries so I can do even more vlogging. And then I've also got headphones, which uh, will allow me to do a bit of cycling crying okey, which is something that I did last time I did an endurance event. Got to fly like an eagle. Uh, and then I'll also stuff any food in there if there's any more space. Then in my saddle bag, which is not giant, but quite large, I've got my toolkit. So in there, I've got Topeak multi-tool, I've got chain tool, I've got two tubes, I've got a puncture repair kit, I've got zip ties, I've got a muck off tubeless repair kit. I've also got my mini pump in there, which is mega. And I'm also gonna stuff my emergency SIS caffeine gels in there as well. This basically is just gonna free up a little bit more space in my back pockets, which is gonna be full of food and then potentially any clothing that I managed to take off during the day as it hopefully warms up from an otherwise chilly start. Here it is then, post 220 miles, battle scarred. I should say battle scarred, not really. The bike came through completely unscathed, but there were two things that I think I should tell you about. Firstly, the irony to being sent incredible, beautiful, brand new top of the range bikes. And then I bolt my own monkey pedals on, which are very nice pedals, but they're three years old. They've been through the mill and the right hand one decided to start squeaking within about three minutes of setting off. 
which I did think was going to possibly take the edge off my day. Anyway, fortunately, because I ended up riding for such a long period of time, it stopped squeaking again, obviously bedded in. So um, anyway, that needs a bit of TLC. And the last thing, hats off to muck off tubeless sealant. So I got to the halfway point, stopped, and uh, I could see there was sealant all the way out the back of the bike. It obviously plugged a very large hole. And then it was continuing to work the whole way through because every now and then I'd get like a little spurt of sealant that would sort of like end up on my legs or you know up my back or something like that um, so there was clearly quite a lot of work going on within my tubeless tires but I you can ta you can ride anything on any bike can't you but I would say that doing something like this 40 mil tires minimum these are 45s and we're mint and if you have the ability to go tubeless go tubeless because I think it's great for someone like this. Absolutely great. So, um, so yeah. But otherwise, it was mint. Particularly suspension. Oh yeah.